You're crazy to know who I am, aren't you? All right, I'll show you. I'll show you who I am and what I am. Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we continue the week of looking at Universal Monsters with the Universal Select Wave 3, The Invisible Man. The Invisible Man is a movie that I kind of came to a lot later than a lot of the other Universal horror icons because, let's just face it, The Invisible Man is not nearly as iconic as many in the Universal backlot. But I'm going to say this first and foremost here, it is an amazing movie. The effects for the time are great and even still they maybe not hold up, but you could still be very entertained by them if nothing else. And this figure came in the third year of Universal Select figures from Diamond Select, and sometimes it feels like I'm the only one buying these things. Even though I said Bride of Frankenstein was a little hard to come by, this line obviously has a much more limited appeal, especially with characters like this. The line proved to have such limited appeal that they actually canceled the deluxe version of The Invisible Man. He was supposed to come with a full lab set and all kinds of cool things, and we never got that, which makes me perpetually sad because as we get into this figure, I'll show you that he's sorely missing those parts. So this was the normal version sold at Toys R Us, and unfortunately, he only comes with one accessory. And what we get is his display base, and it's a little odd. Most of the other figures in this line have come with some piece of flooring that they stand on, and when it's big and outdoors, it'll be thick, and then other pieces have these thin little things. This is a very thick base that is just supposed to be a piece of flooring, so it elevates him height-wise just kind of in an unusual way, but we have the wood grain of the floor here, the paneling, and we have the rug, we have some bandages, and a book. So really nicely detailed, it is a little wonky, though, because the peg is on the carpet, and because of that, he sits slightly leaning to the side. The wood floor is just low enough, and kind of because this base is a little hollow, it seems to have sunken a little on that side as well. So he's a very wobbly-looking invisible man on top of this base, which is a bit disappointing. As for the figure itself, I honestly think starting here at Wave 3, Universal Select kind of turned a corner. Invisible Man kind of, I would call, maybe a Wave 2.5 style figure. So he isn't the full-on improvement. But the sculpting and the paint and the detail got a lot better here. With Wave 1 and Wave 2, I really had to be picky with my figures and make sure I found one with decent paint apps because it was hard to find. But this, pretty much across the line, was a very solidly painted line. And I really, really like what they did here. His face is obviously just pure bandages, he has the goggles and the nose, and the little tufts of hair sticking out, which I always thought was weird, because that's a wig. Of course it's a wig, he's invisible. So he put a wig on, maybe just to look like he was a burn victim or something, I really don't know, but a very strange design. But it's well painted, well sculpted, and I really like it. His costume is very simple, it's just a trench coat. He's got the buttons down the front, he has his shirt and tie underneath, a little yellow handkerchief hanging out. He has his brown gloves. It's all just very simple. He has black pants with some nice weathering on there and black shoes. But in its simplicity, to me, it seems just great. I really dig it. And maybe that's strange. Maybe there's no real reason to, but it's just a solid figure to me. I really further wish the deluxe version had happened, though, because the first thing they were telling us was that we were going to get two completely different things, that the deluxe version he was going to actually be hollow. The goggles and the nose were going to be gone, so we'd see holes into the bandaged head, and I forget what else was different on him, but he was going to be very, very different. And then I think they later changed it so that we were just going to get this guy with extra accessories, with things like test tubes and books and all kinds of stuff. And we didn't get that either. And that really hurts in the hand sculpt, because... I feel like these hands are specifically designed to hold those kind of things. This hand in particular here, it looks like it's just designed to hold a test tube or a beaker in the air. It would have been perfect, and I honestly was trying to find some things I could use that would work, and I was actually looking at, this sounds really weird, but I build bikes for a living, and I was looking at the things you use to cap off cable ends on bikes. There are these little cylinder shaped pieces that are rounded at the bottom and kind of flange at the top. They almost look like a little test tube. Unfortunately, his hand is too open to actually hold one successfully, but 
That was actually something I was attempting to do just because he needs it so badly. For articulation, the head will turn left and right. There's no real up and down here, so just a cut joint. Arms will go out to the side, forward and back, just fine. Still no elbow joints or anything like that. You can swivel out the wrist, you can swivel out the waist very easily, and then nothing in the legs. Maybe another reason why this figure is so easy for me to love is that there was no actual actor to try to make it look like. It's not like you have to make it look like Claude Rains because there's nothing there. He was totally covered in stuff for the entire movie. So it makes it very easy for me to recommend this figure. I really, really like the Invisible Man. He's very cool, very well done. And even though we don't get great articulation, everything else on him, besides the base, I guess, is pretty solid. And maybe I'm bringing in a bias, a love for the character, or something like that in here, but... I just find him a thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable character. I do recommend him. I have no qualms about recommending him. Make sure you check out Outside the Box Reviews on Facebook, there'll be a link below. Also check out Outside the Box Reviews on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. And until next time, be sure to come back and join us for more horror figures throughout the month of October here on Outside the Box Reviews.